Tiffany Perry. I'm Maria. And we are the hosts of the Sad Kick Kickback. With the Burke Best Friend. Where we connect with individuals who are making impact on the city of Richmond and surrounding counties. Today we are happy to, co- to partner with the city of Richmond and the Richmond Police Department Community Connections. And today we will be talking with the Richmond Police Department Chief of Police. Chief Rick Edwards. So, Chief Edwards, we have some questions we would like to ask you. Maria, we're going to start. We're going to, what's your first question? How tall are you? How tall are you? Who told you to ask me that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm six foot, eight inches tall. First, you got to you gotta give me some grace today because I'm a little intimidated. I've never been on a podcast before. It's my first podcast. And I've never met an a influencer as famous as you. So give me some grace today. I might be a little nervous. But I'm six foot, eight inches tall. Six foot, eight inches, right. <laughs> what sports have you played? All right. So I, I, I played uh, basketball. So when I was in high school, I played basketball. I went to postgraduate at Fort Union Military Academy where I played. Then I went to the University of Richmond right here in the city. I played basketball for them. And hey, you can actually read oh. to know my questions. Oh, well, what am I supposed to tell people? Nobody you give me the questions ahead of time. But <laughs> so, so and then I went to Europe and played basketball. And then I came back and I wanted to be a police officer. So I came back to the city I loved and I joined the Richmond Police Department. Do you like school? Well, I my favorite uh, subjects were history. So I really liked history, English. I wasn't very good at math, though. What did you say? I said, what did I say? You said, what do I like in school? Oh, no, what, what, it, what, what subject was my hardest? So math was my hardest subject. Um, but I got through it. You want to share with the chief what's your hardest subject in school? Mm. My hardest subject is math and reading and stuff like that. Okay. Well, you're a smart girl. I'm sure you're going to do well and get the good grades. Why did you want to be a police officer? Because I never wanted a normal type job. First thing, I wanted to help people. And I wanted to do something where I was out in the community walking around. My wife has a very boring job. She sits behind her computer all day and she types in things. Yes, because it's like boring. Okay, well, that wasn't for me. So I wanted to, to go out and do something where I could help people. And I get to do that every day as a police officer. Great. Reacting, what do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? Well, I love uh, playing with my dogs. So I have two dogs. Um, do you have any pets? No. Okay, so I play with my dogs. I play with my kids. I have two sons, one's 17 and one's uh, 14 years old. So I spend time with my wife and my two sons and our two dogs, and we, we enjoy, enjoy doing that. Great, what's your next question for? Well, I'm about to have a pet in class, and I'm about to have a class pet. That is a cow. A cow? In class? <laughs> You're going to have a cow that's going to be a pet? You're going to get some milk from the cow? Okay. What school do you go to? Elementary school. I know. But But it's called the Springers now. Oh, okay. I can't wait to see that cow. You might not be able to see it. (laughs) Well, then maybe they'll have some pictures. What's your favorite food? I like pizza. And not just any kind of pizza. I like thin crust with pepperoni and jalapenos. That's my favorite meal. Wait, what are jalapenos? It's It's a very spicy pepper that they put on the pizza. Excellent. What's his favorite ice cream? What's your favorite ice cream? All right, this is going to be an unsatisfying answer, but I don't eat ice cream anymore. I love ice cream, but I can't eat it because... You sound just like my mommy. She oh. she eats a type of ice cream, but it's not really ice cream. Oh, it's like a special like it's ice cream? It's yogurt. Okay. Well, I used to... When I was your age, I could eat everything I wanted to eat, and I wouldn't gain any weight. Now, if I eat ice cream, I'll get overweight and I don't I don't want to try to avoid that cuz I'm older now the metabolism slows down so it's harder for me but I, I used to like How will you get overweight? Is this sweets? It's not like vegetables or nothing. Well, there's a lot of calories in ice cream. 
So I've had to cut that out of my diet, even though I do like it. Okay. Right. Cause you do work in the community too, right? Okay. Yeah. I help people in the community, like kids that don't have toys and stuff. Mm. Well, that's so nice. Cause I not everyone. Want, I might want to start donating toys to people. Well, that'll... I watch them on YouTube. It's well, a good thing to do. well, that'll make you feel good, making sure not everyone has is has um has the money to buy their own toys so that'll make make kids feel special if you can do that for them is that what you're going to do with your barbie give your barbie to the kids all right that's you tell them about your barbie go ahead so my barbie is like i have the brat stone and mm -hmm. stuff it has like different type of barbies and you're going to give and that try to um make it into a doll so we can use it. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Oh, you have your own doll that's you? Yes. Oh, that is so cool. People, I know a lot of little girls would love that. Oh, wow. Very cool. I wanted to see the castle, the fireworks at the top, because this is where the you get to go there. This is the doll, baby. This is the Ray doll. The Ray doll. The best friend. <laughs> so, Chief, I have some questions for you. Okay. What's the best part of your job? That no two days are the same. So, every day I come to the office now, and there's different challenges, different things happening. So, it's exciting and interesting. Okay. So, what, what do you do when things don't go your way? Well, it is a very stressful job. So just being a police officer in the city of Richmond can be stressful alone, but being the chief I've found over the last couple of years is an up at dawn all day, 24 seven, 365 day a year job. Okay. So now that we heard that, can you tell me some stuff on things that you do inside the community besides mm -hmm. police work? Right. Well, we're committed to community engagement. So every month we have we one week, uh, out of that month, we pick a day and go to one of the communities that are struggling with violent crime. We do a community walk. So our officers are out there before there's crime scene tape up, before anyone's been hurt. And we knock on the door and we hear it from the horse's mouth. So we want to hear what's going on in the community, what their concerns are uh, when it's not when it's not an emergency. And then also another day out of the month, every month we have a pop up event. So we pick, again, a, a community that's struggling with crime and we have an event where we're not necessarily walking. We bring in a DJ, we pass out our swag, we uh, uh, bring an ice cream truck out and people come and meet us and talk to us about what's going on. The next one is going to be, a, we're going to have a trunk or treat as well. Oh, that's dope. So we'll post it on our social media. Hey, how about you put your trunk or treat with our trunk or treat? We can make I think, it look better. I think that's a... That's an awesome but idea. For the future next year, because we're in the county, he's yeah. a city police officer. Well, we can invite you to ours too, because, yeah. like I said, if I can, if I can have a celebrity come to our event, we're gonna have a lot more people show up. So yeah. we'll definitely invite you. All right. So, what's your plans for the rest of the year for the Richmond Police Department? What's your goals? Mm -hmm. What you look forward to? Well, the the most important thing obviously is continuing to re reduce violent crime. So I just did a press press conference last week where we give an update to the community and to the media. Uh, where we're at with violent crime. So we're down 8% year over this time last year. Last year, we finished with a 7% reduction. So it doesn't always feel that way when you look on the news, but Richmond is, is safer than it's been. And a lot of it's due to our relationships with the community. A lot of it's due to the, the planning that we've done to try to put our officers in the right place at the right time to impact crime. And, you know, I think there's just you know, what I want to do is continue to drive that number down and, and make sure that we keep our community safe. I'm glad that you said that. Now that you said that, what are you looking forward to getting more police officers? What are you going to do to recruit more police officers? Well, to the police I'm, department? well I'm, it's, a, it's a challenge because as many people know, policing is, um, is short all over the country, particularly in urban environments. And we're about 150 officers down from where we should be. And uh, so what we're trying to do to recruit is we have had historic pay raises. Um, so we are now competitive with our counterparts in Chesterfield, Henrico, and Hanover. And we have a mechanism in place that we will be competitive for the next three years in our contract. So we have a, a police union the, uh, that has negotiated a contract with the city so that we're gonna be 
right, at, every time the county in, um, increases their uh, their pay for their officers, we're going to increase. So we won't lose officers uh, for pay reasons. But the but the big thing is, we have to get people interested in this work again. So that's the, that's the key thing for us. Interesting work. So that qu my next question will be. How do you keep a good police officer from becoming a bad police officer? Well, the problem with policing is the problem uh, that every employer has and that we recruit from the human race. So people are flawed, but I'd like to think there's, in the Richmond Police Department, there's there's only 4% of the people that applied with us last year, the hundreds of people that applied were accepted. So we have a very high standard, even though we're short staffed because it starts with picking the right people. And we do more to ensure that it's the right person. We do a complete background check. We have a physical fitness test. We have a written test to make sure that they're smart enough to be a police officer. We, we, do a, uh, we talk to their neighbors, their former teachers, um, their former employers. We do a polygraph exam. We do drug tests. We do a psychological exam. We have a panel interview. So it's a, it's a long process. And, and then we have an eight month academy where we're evaluating them. And then a year after they've, they're on the street as a police officer, there's still an evaluation process. And what we found is that if someone doesn't meet our standards, we're gonna cut ties with them. And we're gonna hold people accountable because even good police officers make mistakes. And when they make the mistakes, it's important to know that we're gonna hold them accountable. Oh, I love that. So be, being out here, um, I, we go out and we talk to the youth. How can you pull the youth in? What message would you have for the youth in our community? Well, the, I think that getting people interested in law enforcement is a part of it. If there's something that you see in policing that, that you have a problem with, I always encourage folks uh, to do ride-alongs with our officers to see what it actually is. But for our youth, um, I think it's so important for, for folks to have options and those options start when you graduate high school. That's a big uh, stumbling block for young folks if they don't have a high school diploma to be able to get gainful employment. But if they don't have a diploma, there's ways to, to go back and get that. So I think there's that and continuing education, staying away from the wrong people. Correct. Because if you're hanging out with someone who is committing crimes, even if you're a good person, you're they're bringing that negativity, negativity towards you. And I've seen so many times where people get caught up being arrested or getting hurt in violent interactions with people, be, not because they're a bad person, but they're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Absolutely. All right, Mara, do you have any questions you want for the chief for a week? Or anything you want to tell them about you? Tell them they can stop, they can stop <laughs> following us. Tell them where they can follow us at, how they can find you us. You can follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, and TikTok. And what's the name of, what, what's the name of it? Where, where are they following you? Psychic so came back with the bird best friend. And who are you? The bird best friend. And who am I? The psychic. Good job. Awesome. So are you, what are you selling? I'm selling stocks, bows, shirts. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can go ahead. He's heading the okay. So you got the merchandise. Yes. So we got t-shirts we can buy. We've got all, where can they find these? These, do you have a website where people yeah. can buy your merchandise? Yes. All right. We have free waters, free chips and stuff. Hmm. And you selling this to do what? To go to where? Disneyland. To do what? What do you want to go to Disney to do? So I can have fun and play with the Disney princesses. And interview, and interview who? That was your plan. Okay. <laughs> so. We're planning on going to Disney to interview the princesses. That's like we're interviewing Chief Elvis. Right. So that's our next step, our goal, to help her get to Disney World. That's her dream. I mean, it's been awesome. Bye. Uh, bye. <laughs>